Hello dolls, welcome back to my channel. This is Ebony Nakira, the Dominican princess. And to say the least, I am so very excited about this episode. In this episode, I will be sharing with all of you how to be elegant, how to be that elegant woman that you've always wanted to be. Being elegant is a valued and respected characteristic of ladies. And to become an elegant lady, to become that best version of yourself, there are some steps you must take in order to really commit to that elegant lifestyle. So in this episode, I will be sharing with all of you dolls out there my top five tips in becoming an elegant woman. If you are new to my channel, hello dear, I'm Ebony Nakira Okeke. I do post two times a week on fashion, feminine elegance, and lifestyle. Without further ado, let's begin. For my first tip for you dolls, it would have to be to dress and primp yourself in an appropriate way. This means go for more tasteful choices. Having fashion or dressing it in a certain way that is a bit too flashy, a bit too bold, something that is a bit more characterized as being loud with your fashion choices is something that you would want to steer away from when you are trying to become your best elegant self. As an elegant woman, you want to keep your fashion choices very sophisticated. This does not mean that you have to dress in a very stiff and boring way. I believe that fashion is fun, it's a great way of expressing yourself, and you want to do that in the best tasteful way that you can. So that may mean pulling back from very flashy type of clothing that is either bold with colors or prints or with styles. And again, you dolls know my motto here on my channel. It's about having a classic and signature style that is timeless and elegant and less is more. So that means pulling back from two or three different bold clothing choices for one outfit. Let's focus on one type of statement piece and everything around that should really just complement it. Now, let's look at what I'm wearing. This involves makeup, accessories, and clothing. If you look at me now, the main bold statement that I have going on would be my lipstick color. Now, since I'm wearing this, I decided to go very classic with this choice. As in, instead of wearing a bright red top or something with a lot of prints in different colors, I chose to keep it simple and classic. I chose an off the shoulder, long sleeve top. It's very classic, the red lip, and so this more romantic top really does complement it. As for accessories, I did go for a velvet black headband and also a pair of double-sided earrings, pearls and diamonds. Those two jewelry choices, the combination of the diamonds and also the pearl, they're for one very classic pieces and it doesn't distract away from my lipstick or from my top. They're a bit more understated but there's a bit of interest involved. So notice how for my makeup, since I was going for a bold red lipstick color, I didn't go for bold eyeshadow. I didn't go for a bold color of blush. I want to keep the focus on the lipstick. Now, does my blush complement the shade of my lipstick? Yes, and there's nothing wrong with complementing and mixing colors together to complement your main focal point. So since we did mention my makeup, let's talk about makeup because makeup is also very much involved within your ensemble, your outfit, which means that your makeup is either supposed to be the statement or it's supposed to complement your outfit, what you're wearing. We don't want anything that we're wearing or anything that we're putting on to distract from us. And that is the main message of this first tip. Everything else that I'm wearing is complementing me, is complementing my natural beauty. And that is what we want our fashion and our makeup to do, all of our beauty products. We want it to complement the natural beauty that we have within us. So if you are new to makeup or you have been putting on makeup and you know you are not best at one, at one part of makeup, then I would say restrain from doing it. To me, 
I'd rather wear no makeup than to wear makeup incorrectly. Now, what do I mean by wearing makeup incorrectly, right? Because it's makeup, right? We just put it on and it's supposed to look good. But if you are a makeup wearer, then you know that there are certain guidelines to makeup, as in the application, focusing on different tones and colors that really do complement us. So if you want to master a certain part of makeup, maybe it's the application, learning what tones works best on you, as in foundation, lipstick, blush, eyeshadow, then definitely take time to learn about it. Read different articles, read different books about it, watch different YouTube videos about it. Or you could go somewhere, learn about it, have someone teach you, and really just take in that information and have trial and errors so you can be able to wear makeup to where it complements you and it doesn't distract from your natural beauty. And on my blog, I will be premiering a lady's guide to feminine elegance. So if you aren't subscribed to my blog already, then don't forget to so you won't miss when that guide premieres. I know that it will help you dolls so much within your feminine elegance journey. And I would very much appreciate it if you do subscribe to my channel and to my blog. So the subject of appearances brings me into my next tip. Tip number two would have to be be careful and be wary of your facial expressions. Now, would you want to approach me or talk to me or maybe make small conversation with me if my face is like this? And most of us walk around looking that way, right? Because that's just how our face lays down. It makes me look like I'm a bit bored. It may make me look like I'm unentertained by everyone and everything around me it may make me look like i am too serious i am a stick in the mud and so how do we change this right does this mean we have to walk around smiling 24 7 just like this just in case someone wants to speak to us no it does not mean that and honestly your cheeks would probably start hurting <laughs> but what you can do instead is have a more gentle facial expression. Now, sometimes if I am in an aisle or in a section of a shopping store by myself and then I may see someone approach, I will lighten my facial expression. I want it to be a little bit more light and inviting, showing that if you would like to say something to me or if I would like to say something to you, it's going to be friendly. And that's what we want to have, a more friendlier, gentle facial expression, as if I'm about to form a smile, but not exactly, right? It's in the baby steps of forming a smile, which means you don't have to put that much effort into it. It's not going to strain you too much. This is such an important tip for everyone and so as an elegant lady it's very vital and that would have to be knowing your etiquette. That means your manners, how do you conduct yourself in a social environment and I do have a separate episode on that. In that episode I do speak about five things to avoid doing as an elegant and sophisticated woman and so I will link that down below if you dolls are interested in getting bit more detail. As you dolls know, I grew up in a Dominican Caribbean strict mannerful household and so manners is something that is very important to me and on my dad's side we are southern and so southern as we know all of our southern bells have great manners. So manners is something that I grew up around. It's something that I value within others and within myself. It's something that is so very important to me and for all of us, I believe manners is something that is so important. And so what we have to do is make sure that we are still being mannerful in all ways. So some of them would have to be forgetting our table manners. Now table manners, whether you are at home or out in public, or maybe you're at a formal dinner, table manners are very important no matter what environment you are in. And for me, whether I am at a dinner party, I'm having dinner with family members, table manners are very important to me. And that's one of my pet peeves, if you will. If someone doesn't have the best table manners, it really, it's about being 
overall manners is about being respectful and courteous of others, knowing how to conduct yourself. It could really be a hindrance to us being our best elegant and feminine self. Have you ever met someone who just speaks so eloquently, so beautifully, almost as if they can write poems and write books and be an author? Now, being an eloquent speaker also involves you being careful with your choice of words. Now, how do you do this? If you are in everyday conversation, whether it is casually, informally, or formal, then what you have to do is make sure that you are responding in the best way that you can. This means that you should be careful to avoid rambling. Do you know what point you're trying to make but you're having a hard time now? That happens to all of us. Sometimes we can ramble on because we get excited or we may have a point and we may lose it and we're trying to find it again mid-conversation. What you can do is pause. Pause whenever you are about to give someone a response. And that is something that's so important. As a Christian, I view the Bible as a blueprint to our lives and we should apply that in all different parts of our lives. One of my favorite Bible quotes would have to be, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Now, we can take this part of scripture and apply it to multiple parts of our lives. When we are approaching conflict, we can use this part of scripture to help us along with the Holy Spirit. And whenever we are living our everyday lives, being elegant and eloquent women, that is something that we could take and use. Like I mentioned, being eloquent, you don't want to be so quick to respond. Sometimes we are having a great conversation, it's very entertaining, we may get excited and we may respond and it's just back to back and it's great. But what you want to do is make sure that you are being eloquent when you are speaking. Whenever someone asks you a question, you want to take time to pause, gather your thoughts and then respond. A more eloquent and structured response is better than a quick one. And doing this shows that you are taking time and you care about giving the best response that you can to the person you are speaking to. And I know when I am speaking to someone and they take that time to respond, to reply to me in the best way that they can, I value that. I say that they are a great conversationalist and they speak very eloquently. And that is something that we should start implementing into our casual conversations and into our more serious conversations. Pause, stop, be quick to listen, be slow to speak. My last tip to you dolls is my most favorite tip and that would have to be be genuine, be you. When we are trying to become elegant, this isn't us being a bit, as people say, stuck up, serious, as if we have some type of persona that we are better than anyone and everyone. That is not how an elegant lady conducts herself and that is not how a true elegant lady conducts herself. Now, again, I have two different cultural backgrounds here, Southern American background, and also my Caribbean background. This doesn't mean that I have to act like I am some other culture, some other ethnicity that really helps me get in channel with my elegant self. We don't need that. And not one culture is more elegant or more refined and sophisticated than another. You're choosing to dress in a more elegant way, to present yourself in a more elegant way. These are different aspects that is a part of becoming more elegant. It's not about being a different version of yourself, having this alter ego. That is not what it's about. All of that honestly is nonsense. It's about being your best self. It is about choosing to be intentionally elegant to where it's not just about you being this different version of yourself. It's about you becoming the better version of yourself to where it's 
over time, it will become an effortless elegance, something that is just a part of you. It's who you are. It's such a great characteristic that people see within you. It's such a great characteristic that you value within yourself. Dolls, please do not forget to subscribe. I appreciate every single one of you who are subscribed already, and I appreciate all of the future subscribers. If you dolls enjoyed this episode, please do not forget to like this video. And also dolls, what was your favorite tip? What is something that you didn't realize was so important when becoming an elegant lady? And if you're interested in reading in my lady's guide to feminine elegance, please do not forget to subscribe to my blog. I will be having that premiering very soon and I'm so excited for it. Dolls, thank you so much again and I will see you dolls in my next episode. Bye!